everybody, and welcome to the Labyrinth of Limitations. Um, this is an ongoing series, so if, if this is the first time you've checked it out, I recommend going to episode one or the episode zeros um, to kind of catch some basic concepts. Um, we're talking about, today we're going to talk about the scale of scales again, which is all the things we can do on the Donut 7. And I arrange that, I could arrange that on my hand um, like this, I think about it, and in the Tesseract Shapes in the Labyrinth app, if you're checking that out, um, you can go up and down the scale of scales by hitting the plus and minus keys. Um, but here we have uh, the dominant seven flat five, then we have above that is, because notes go up as I move through these, above that I have the dominant seventh chord and its family members, then I have the fully diminished seventh chord, which is expressed by the octatonic, then I have the minor six chords and its family members, then I have the dominant seventh sharp five and ninth with no root. So on E flat seven, that would be dominant seventh, flat five, and then dominant seventh, or one of the family members. And then I raise a note to get to the diminished that expresses E flat seven. Then I raise a note to get to, say, the minor six and the five. And I raise a note once more, and now I have the dominant seventh, sharp five with a ninth. What I'm going to look at is what I've talked about before, that half of these um, scales of chords use one diminished as the off chord, and half of them, a little more than half, use the other diminished. So the, I'm going to look at the top half of the scale scales that all use the same off chord. So starting with the octatonic, so the off chord has E flat in it, that's the diminished with E flat in it. That's the same thing for the minor six on the five, and for the sharp five ninth, which is just an inversion of your dominant seven flat five shape. So if you know this shape and you know this shape, then you can do, um, uh, uh, can I do it? And I think of that, when I'm doing that, I think of that as just G dominant seven flat five is what my mind is thinking in order to play it fast. So. So that's the sound there. So I'm, I'm running G seven flat five and A flat major. What I'm going to look at today is, and I've been practicing this, I'm practicing this this morning. I just kind of started thinking about how I don't do this enough. Running one of the um, upper half scales of scales, so the diminished or the um, minor six chords, into that top of the scale of scales, dominant seventh, sharp five, ninth using the off chord that's shared between them. And it makes some really pretty things. So at the beginning of this video, I did. And what I did there, what I'm thinking is I'm thinking B flat minor six with a little shell chord. And then I'm going down that scale. This is off to B flat minor six, off. Now, this right here, the shell, what's super cool about this, if I made a four note drop two, I could reveal that it is the minor six and the five or G dominant seven flat five, which is that in relation to E flat, it has the sharp fifth and the ninth. But if I don't have that top string, this could live in either of those spaces. And that is really appealing because it's nice when we kind of reveal slowly. I've already shifted, but I'm revealing slowly where I am. And it's nice. So same. Mm -hmm. That's where it reveals itself because now I can hear that flat five, the, the, the B natural. I guess that's the really distinctive sound because it would be this, but instead this. Compare. Nice, soft, sweet sound, or that was just all the minor six and the five. No. I guess, um, a little bit of a, a very colorful, I think. So I've been looking at these, doing any of the other, so doing, um, I've been mainly doing the minor six and the five, the tritones minor, or the diminished um, into G dominant seven flat five, and then running on A flat major. So I'll do some more. I'll just go from this shell chord. So I'll go. That 
was just B flat minor six off, and then yeah, and then that's the G dominant seven flat five. Start up a little higher. Here is B flat minor six. So B flat minor six. I'll stay in it for two, and then right. So pretty stuff. Um, I'll do uh, one up here. Start on the off. I guess I did thirds there. I did thirds off, on, off, on. This is B flat minor six, and then there's the G dominant seven flat five. Resolving A flat major or E flat major, which is the major six and the five, over A flat. So that's those. Gosh, I'll just do some more. I'm just kind of sharing the general ideas. If you know anything to do in these scales, use the off chord and connect and, and go into that beautiful um, dominant seventh sharp five ninth, which is the way I think of it, as I've said before, um, in the extended family episode, I believe. I um, think of it as the dominant seventh flat five, a major third above my actual dominant seventh. And then I have another one that I could do that's a augmented fifth above. So I keep that in my mind easily because that spells a augmented triad, the roots of these extended family members. But um, okay, so how about I'll do, um, so I wanna, I'll do tritones minor, which is a different kind of sound. So, um, <laughs> For me, I like the minor six and the five maybe a little bit better, but I like this one. So, so that's nice. I like that one just fine. So this is E minor six on off on off, and then G dominant seven the flat five. Which is really pretty. Um, you could do. Oops, let me do this again. That was with the chromatic concept there. So I'm doing a shell chord of E minor six, and I'm just doing the Barry's chromatic concept that I've talked about. And, and then there's that G dominant seven flat five. It's pretty. Pretty stuff. And then what am I leaving out? I guess uh, so that was the tritones minor. Then we could do just the diminished. So. Octatonic, octatonic, G dominant seven flat five. I'll do just uh, um, something like this, like um, oh, that's a pretty one. So I'm doing this is just a little shell chord of octatonic. G 
dominant seven flat five at the end, and I do a little borrowing. Like that. Pretty stuff. So there's just a lot of ways to do it. And so I just thought I would share that with you guys. Um, I've been just having a blast with this today and I think it's really cool. So all I'm doing is using the off chord that is shared and I'm running, um, mostly today I've been running the uh, B flat minor six into, uh, into G dominant seven flat five into A flat. But I've also been doing these other ones and really enjoying them. I like that octatonic one a lot. Um, I'll do one more of those just for kicks. How about this up here? So I'm gonna go. Yeah. What about one of these? Like that. That's pretty. So this is octatonic. I'm just going down on chord. On chord. the idea. I hope that you think these are uh, fun to check out. Take anything that you know and practice it um, like that. And then also I really just want to recommend something like this really reveals the value of the smaller voicing. Shell chords, thirds, fifths, all of this stuff is super cool um, because it doesn't just reveal instantly that you've shifted chords. If you play four note chords that have all the notes you're instantly hitting our ears with uh, that move but you can kind of more seamlessly transition if you do smaller shapes and then reveal as you go kind of just as it happens so um worth checking it out so thanks everybody and uh i'll follow up with more soon and uh, have fun keep practicing